the unthinkable things Genghis Khan did to his enemies. Genghis Khan, known as the fierce Mongolian warrior ruler, was one of the most popular conquerors of history. He was a genius warrior who, from an obscure beginning, brought all the nomadic tribes of Mongolia under his rule and his family into a disciplined military state. He later started a series of campaigns of conquest, leading to the establishment of the great Mongol Empire. But little did we know that he was cruel and unkind to his enemies and did unthinkable things to them. In today's video, we will discuss some unthinkable things he did to his enemies. Without further ado, let's begin. He humiliated and enslaved people from other religions. He used to talk and seek advice from holy men of all religions, like Islam, Buddhism, Christianity, and Taoism. He used his intelligence and acknowledged his enemies. He had special contempt for Muslim and Jewish people, referring to them as his slaves, and humiliated them by not allowing them to follow their customs. For example, Muslims were forbidden to kill sheep, and Jews were not allowed to follow their practice of circumcision. Khan was concerned that if they lived in his kingdom, they should follow his rules. He killed 1.7 million people to avenge one person. Marriages at that time were strategic alliances, but that didn't mean there was no love. One of his daughters loved her husband, and Genghis Khan considered him his favorite son-in-law. When his son-in-law was killed, his wife demanded vengeance, so Genghis Khan's troops attacked the city and slaughtered every person. Around 1.7 million people were killed, and without a doubt, his armies killed everyone they found. Babies, children, women, and even animals were murdered and beheaded. Their skulls were later piled into pyramids. He beheaded people who were more than 90 centimeters tall. When he was 20, he led an army against the tribe that killed his father to get revenge. The Tater army was defeated, and he unusually exterminated them. Every Tater man was lined in a queue and measured against the linchpin of a wagon, which was the axle pin in the middle of the wheel. Anyone found taller than those pins was to be beheaded. The victim's bones were mistaken for mountains. In 1211, he focused on modern-day China and attacked the Jin Empire. The empire had 53 million people, and the Mongols had 1 million. Still, Genghis won the fight. Within three years, the Mongols had their way to Zhengdu, now known as Beijing. The city had 12-meter-high walls stretching to 29 kilometers surrounding the city, and it was impossible to get in. The Mongols let Zhengdu people starve, and in 1215, hunger and cannibalism was rampant inside the walls. Finally, Zhengdu surrendered, and the Mongols burned the city. The massacre was horrific. Months later, an eyewitness noticed that the bones of the slaughtered formed white mountains, and the soil was greasy with human fat. His half-brother was killed for not sharing food with Genghis. Genghis Khan was the son of a powerful chieftain, but his condition changed when an enemy tribe poisoned his father. His mother was taking care of four children, two of her own and two stepchildren. They were left with no home, scavenged for food, and ate plants or discarded food they found on the road. That time, he learned that he would have to fight and kill for what he needed to get. One day, he found a fish and brought that fish to his family, but his half-brother snatched it from his hands and didn't share it with anyone. They had an argument, and Genghis's mother sided against him. He got furious and murdered his brother when he was alone with a bow and arrow. He had his men use captured enemies as body shields in combat, the Khan was selective about who to use as human shields for combat. He would execute enemy soldiers who surrendered expecting good treatment, and sometimes, if they were highly skilled with the right attitude, he let them join his army. Depending on his mood, he would let his men take numerous surrendered enemy soldiers and force them to fight the front lines. His army couldn't shed the blood of noble people, but alternatives were brutal. Genghis and his army had certain honor rules during murder and war. One such rule was they couldn't spill noble blood. Hence, they would not stab or kill a noble. But that doesn't mean the noble was spared, as it led the noble to have a gruesome and awful death. The normal method was to snap the noble's neck or suffocate them. But in 1223, Mongolians celebrated as the Russian army surrendered and their towns were captured. The nobility and generals of the Russian army were forced to lie down on the ground and a heavy wooden gate was thrown at them. Tables and chairs were set on that gate and the Mongolians sat down for the feast. They held their victory celebration over those Russian still living bodies, eating and drinking, while Russian nobles were crushed to death. He let his allies marry his daughters and later let them get killed. 
the biggest power at Genghis Khan was to let his allies marry his daughters. To marry his daughters, the king had to cast out their other marriages so that Khan's daughters could be the only heirs to the throne. Later, the kings were then sent to the front lines of the Mongolian army, and everyone died in combat, with his daughters taking over their kingdoms. He diverted a river through his enemy's birthplace to erase it off the map. When he found the Khwarezmian's Muslim kingdom, he took the peaceful route. The diplomats were sent to the city, hoping to establish diplomatic ties and trade routes. The Khwarezmian's governor didn't trust him and killed them. It made Genghis Khan furious, and he set up an army of 200,000 soldiers and attacked and destroyed the Khwarezmian kingdom. Even after he won the fight, he sent two armies to burn down all the castles, farms, and towns to ensure no hint a Khwarezmian survived. He even diverted a river's route to run through the emperor's birthplace to ensure it would not exist on the map again. He also erased the Zizia kingdom after this war from the map for not sending him troops. The kingdom took a stand against him, but was exterminated. The kingdom's history was erased and no evidence was found. Their language was not even recovered for hundreds of years. He made an enemy archer a general when he got shot by him. During the Mongolian clan, Genghis Khan's horse was hit with an arrow. His army fought on and won the battle, and he went for revenge. Surprisingly, the archer rode boldly and bravely to the camp, addressed the Khan, accepting his deed, and said that he could have killed Genghis Khan if he wanted to. However, Genghis Khan was impressed with him, making Jibi a commander in his army. Jibi later became a general and one of the most trusted friends of Genghis Khan, all as a reward for nearly killing him. He boiled his enemy general alive. Before he united the Mongols and started his reign, he had rivals among the Mongols for leadership, some of whom were barbaric and insane like him. One of them was Jamaka, and after achieving a great victory, Khan burned the enemy generals in 70 cauldrons. The cruelty was legendary and caused some people to turn their support to Khan. This could be one of the ways to kill nobles without shedding their blood, and was a much more horrific punishment. The screams were terrifying, and the sight was not easy to watch. He poured molten silver into an enemy's eyes and ears and told the population that he was sent by God to punish them. In Lechang, a nobleman who led a large city came into the way of Genghis's conquest. Years before, Genghis Khan sent a massive caravan of 500 men hoping to create more regional trade routes. Khan then went on a rampage and killed the hated leader by pouring molten silver into his eyes and ears. Moreover, he didn't lead the people and killed the entire population, wrecking all remnants of the city. Finally, when he killed In Lechang, his rage led him to declare to the population that he was sent by God to punish them. Everyone who buried him was killed. Genghis Khan died during the battle with the Zizia kingdom. When he died, he desired to be buried where no one could find his corpse. To fulfill his wish, his body was carried miles away into the wilderness by some slaves escorted by soldiers. The slaves buried him in a secret place. And to maintain the secrecy, the warriors massacred them and threw them into the grave. Then the soldiers rode their horses over it and planted trees to hide the spot. Moreover, when those warriors made their way to camp again, they were slaughtered to ensure no one would ever talk about where Khan was buried. Khan died in a massacre, but his hidden tomb has yet to be found. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below.